Hi, we're at the Terry Eye Institute, and today we'll be discussing the normal tear film and show videos of its visible components obtained using the iPhoto Doc Clinician through slit lamp examination. This video is the first in a series of videos describing the tear film and abnormalities leading to various disorders. Though the tear film may seem simple, it is actually quite complex, with literally hundreds of proteins and fatty acids associated with it. Not only does the tear film act to lubricate the eye, but it also acts as the first line of defense against invading pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, or fungus. There are four main layers to the tear film, the lipid layer, the meibomian microsphericals, the aqueous layer, and the mucin layer. The most superficial or outer layer of the tear film is the lipid or oil layer, and is produced by the meibomian glands in both the upper and lower eyelids. This layer is extremely important in helping to stabilize the tear film and prevents evaporation of the lower layers. The meibomian glands run most of the way across the entire lid and there's up to a hundred total between the upper and lower lid of each eye. Recent research has shown that in addition to the oily substance that makes up the lipid layer, the meibomian glands also secrete proteins and other lipids into the tear film. These components are slowly released throughout the blank as the orbicularis muscle squeezes on the meibomian gland. It probably comes as no surprise that many of the dry eye symptoms are a direct result of dysfunction of the meibomian glands. A possible visible component of meibomian secretions are the meibomian microsphericals. Though not traditionally considered a tear film layer, we feel that this is an important clinical presentation. As we can see in this low down video of a normal eye taken with the eye photo clinician, there is a large quantity of meibomian microsphericals. These are readily visible during what we call the spot test. If you look at the filament reflection off the cornea, you'll notice them throughout the blank. Though in the past these were considered tear film debris, clinically we have noticed a strong correlation between the lack of these microsphericals and symptoms of dry eyes. The middle layer of the tear film is called the aqueous layer or the watery layer and makes up a large portion of the tear film by volume. This layer is produced by the lacrimal glands which are located above the eye and towards the temples. The lacrimal glands also produce some of the proteins located in the tear film. According to some studies, a majority of the aqueous layer and the tear film as a whole is located in the meniscus or prism as it is sometimes called due to its ability to refract light. This meniscus or prism is located just above the lower lid and also below the upper lid. This can be seen on a normal video, though not to a great extent. Using a fluorescein dye is useful in visualizing the upper and lower tear meniscus. Many studies use fluorescein when assessing the tear meniscus height of the lower lid, which is related to tearing production. A reduced tear meniscus is associated with aqueous deficiency. True aqueous deficiencies, however, are uncommon and mostly related to inflammatory conditions affecting the lacrimal gland. The innermost layer of the tear film is the mucin layer, and it is the layer that directly contacts the outer surface of the cornea epithelial cells. This layer is produced by the goblet cells within the conjunctiva. Mucin is synonymous with mucus, however many of the mucin molecules in this layer are transmembrane, meaning that they are associated with the epithelial cells versus being free-floating like some mucin molecules. This is important because it allows the tear film to evenly coat the cornea and interacts with the aqueous layer to prevent the tear film from quickly flowing off the cornea. This video shows superficial punctate staining of the cornea epithelial cells and is a common presentation of dry eyes. Possible causes will be discussed in later videos in this series. This video was done as part of a thesis project for a Master of Public Health degree through a CEPH accredited program. We would like to thank the Terry Eye Institute for use of the iPhoto.clinician and for images used in this video. For more information, please go to iPhotoDoc.com.